There is nothing that Allah does without wisdom. So here, we need to understand that it is very important that we establish our strong belief in Allah and we never doubt, no matter what type of tribulations we go through. This hadith is in the section of Tawheed, unity of Allah. We need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only Lord, the only creator, the only sustainer. And we need to believe that all of his actions done to us or to others are done with the utmost level of wisdom and the subtlest level of wisdom, which we, which we or generations later may not pick up on. I usually give the example of Al-Khadr alayhi salam. Al-Khadr alayhi salam, we recited his story many times here. When he built the wall for the two young, for the, for the two bo orphans, boys, for what reason? The explanation came later that their father was, the Quran says, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Their father was a righteous man. Actually, in the commentary you say, it is their seventh grandfather back. It is their seventh grandfather back who was righteous. Seven generations later, Allah sent a prophet and a saint to help these two orphans for the sake of their seventh grandfather. Many contemporaries of that grandfather probably laughed at him and said, what benefit did you get from, from your worship? It takes seven generations. And this is difficult. You can't trace this. So never object to the power of Allah. When you see calamities befalling certain lands or certain people or you or others, believe in the wisdom of Allah. As much and as long as you are a believer, you are on the safe side. Allah does not want anything to happen to you but good. But this good may not appear in a short period of time. It may take your whole life and you will see it and witness it in the grave, starting your next life. You will see the rewards of, of your patience. You think that when someone goes through calamities, they are suffering? This suffering is just temporary. It's like a baby crying when given an injection or, or vaccination for five minutes, then he'll forget about it. That's the pain which we go through or people have to go through in this life when calamities befall them. Then you wake up upon your death and you see all of the great bounties, all the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the Prophet says, مَا يُصِيبُ الْمُؤْمِنَ مِنْ وَصَبٍ مِنْ نَصَبٍ وَلَا وَصَبٍ حَتَّى الشَّوْكَةُ يُشَاكُهَا إِلَّا كُتِبَ لَهُ بِهِ أَجْرٍ Nothing that befalls you of any pain or any tribulations, including a thorn in your finger, but you get rewards for it. Imagine all the types of, of calamities. Even if you're waiting for the, for the bus, the bus station, the bus is one minute late. That's a calamity, and for your patience, you'll get rewarded. The Prophet Sallallahu lace once was, was, was cut, and he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Once the Prophet Sallallahu had his lamp off, oil lamp off, he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Qalu amusibatun hiya, ya Rasulullah, is it a calamity? Qala kullu ma yu'dhi al-mu'mina fahuwa lahu musiba. Every calamity that brings you, that annoys you, disturbs you, is a calamity. Is a musiba. Everything that disturbs you is a calamity. And you will be rewarded for it. Imagine if someone has cancer, if someone, they have family members who are ill and they have to take care of them. Some people are paralyzed. Some people lose their jobs. Some people are divorced. Some people suffer in their marriages. Imagine it's a long list of suffering. But this suffering all turns to be sweet. Just when you wake up exactly like a baby forgets the injection and then they wake up and then smiling again. It all it takes just a short period of time, which is your life on the face of the earth. <laughs>